Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of orthographic projection. So in this video we're going to look at how to create an auxiliary elevation or, or simply put how to get a view from an object when looking at it from a different direction. So to do that we'll first of all begin by just looking at the basic principles that we've already seen in our orthographic projection. Now from our previous video we'll remember that we have need three components when it comes to creating an orthographic view. We need a direction here represented by our Lego man and our arrow. We need an object and we need a plane of reference or a screen to project our image onto. And basically we take our viewing direction, and we gather up the image from the object and we project it using these projection lines. And we cast it like a shadow onto our screen or our plane of reference giving us our orthographic image. And if you remember from our previous video the relationship between our viewing direction and our projection lines is that the two are parallel and the relationship between our direction and our plane of reference is that the two are perpendicular. Or in other words, that our plane of reference or our screen must be straight in front of our viewing direction so it doesn't distort the image. So the next thing we'll do then is have a look at our setup for our auxiliary elevation. And you can see here we have the plan view of our object, here we have the front elevation of our object, and over here we have a 3D representation of the same thing. So at the moment we have our Lego man here, a spectator, standing directly in front of the object, giving us our front elevation. That's the resultant image. Um, so if you look closer at the object, you'll see this red surface outlined here. And from where our spectator is standing, because this surface here is angled away from him, in our front elevation, it appears what's known as foreshortened. So it's distorted or it appears narrower than what it actually is because it's angled away from us. Only when we're looking straight at an object, will we see it as a true shape or true size. So if we wanted our spectator to see the true shape of this object, well, he'd have to move to a different position and get a different view or an auxiliary elevation. So auxiliary elevation literally means auxiliary or alternative elevation. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take our spectator and we're going to move him around so that he's now looking straight in at the edge of this surface we're trying to find. So that's our two components sorted. We have our spectator or our viewing direction, we have our object, we need our third component which is going to be our plane of reference. So we can see we draw in what's known as the x1, y1 line perpendicular to our viewing direction and that literally represents an edge view of our screen or our plane of reference. Here labelled AVP, it's an auxiliary vertical plane like so. Now at the moment what we have here is our auxiliary vertical plane seen in a folded up state. So we're seeing it as an edge. But our x1, y1 line can also represent this line here where our auxiliary vertical plane meets the ground or the horizontal plane and it acts as a hinge to hinge back our object like so. So when it's hinged back it'll be seen flat on the ground and we'll see it in our plan view like so. So this is where our auxiliary elevation is going to appear. So we'll just hinge him back up for the moment and like that we'll do the same here in our 3D view and what we're going to do is we're going to cast what our spectator sees like a shadow onto our auxiliary vertical plane. So we'll do that here in our 3D view we can see there is our image like so. We're going to do the same in our plan view by drawing in our projection lines parallel to our viewing direction like so and there they are stuck casting like a shadow onto our screen here. Now to get our auxiliary elevation we need to knock this down flat into our unfolded state um, but to do that we're going to need to know where we're going to get our heights for our image and if we just take a close look at our 3D we can see well the height that we have in our front elevation is going to be the same as the heights in our auxiliary elevation and this should make sense by simply walking around the object well the object doesn't get any larger or smaller so the height that we see here if we say that the height of our object is 20 millimeters here it's going to be 20 millimeters here. If the overall height is 50 millimeters, the overall height is going to be 50 millimeters here, like so. Um, and there's a handy little rule when it comes to remembering where do we get our um, heights from. And it's the 1 2 rule. So at the moment, we're trying to create our auxiliary elevation here using our x1, y1 line as the base. So if this is our base here, like that we count back 1, 
xy line. So this is to our previous xy line, the xy line here. So that's the, our previous ground line. And where the 2 comes in is that we count, we're trying to create this view here, so we count back two views. So follow the lines back, this is back one view, and then up to our elevation. So what that means is this is the view that we're going to get our measurements from. So if we imagine our object folded out like so, our heights are coming from the xy line here to our front elevation, and we're going to step them off of our x1, y1 line in our auxiliary elevation. And then all we need to do is just continue our projection lines on for each our individual surface to create our auxiliary elevation of that surface. So if we imagine our knockdown L shape here, so this surface here, well on our object in plan view, this corner, this corner, and this corner here represents the different edges on that surface. So if we continue them on using our height lines, we can redraw in the shape of that surface. And if you look, our L shape here goes up across down, across, and down again, and it's exactly the same here. Up, across, down, across, and down again. So, in spite of being a little bit narrower, the overall shape of our auxiliary view, our auxiliary image, won't change from our front elevation. Same thing applies with our true shape here. Here it appears as a rectangle, but when we're looking in straight here to that, it's still going to be a rectangle, only now because we're looking straight in at it, it's going to give us the true width, like so. But the overall shape is still the same, only now the the lengths are true. Same thing applies with our front surface here. Again, it appears as a rectangle, so by projecting up our corner, it's still going to appear as a rectangle here, only this time it's not going to be true because it's angled away from us. Same applies then with our back surface here, and you can see there's our back surface drawn in, and most students at this point would say that the drawing is complete, but if you look at our projection lines, there's one line we haven't used yet, and this line here, this back corner, which won't be visible from where a spectator is standing, will still need to be represented using a hidden line. So even though we don't see it, um, it still needs to be represented using our hidden line like so. So that then is our auxiliary elevation completed. And what we have here is our auxiliary elevation in a folded out state. So if we go back to our 3D view, what we're doing is we're going to see that knocked down flat and our front elevation knocked down flat giving us our folded out state. Folded up state, and there we had our folded out state. So if we go back to our x1, y1 line here, this x1, y1 line can represent our image in its folded up state, like so, or it can represent the hinge line for our plane when it's knocked down flat. So it's actually two things depending on the state. Um, so that's the auxiliary elevation completed. I'm just going to turn off the colour here to give you a better idea of what you're going to see on your own sheet. So this is what you'll see on your sheet, like so. Um, so with our auxiliary elevation completed, um, if you want to tune in for the next video, we're going to look at an auxiliary plan, which is taking an alternative view from above the object. Um, but again, I hope this has been of some benefit to you, and stay tuned for more videos. Um, thank you very much.